Is data engineering a safe career choice for your future? I honestly get this question a lot where people are like, hey, you know, is data engineering safe? Whether it's from a chat GPT angle and honestly even far before anything that had to do with chat GPT. So I want to take a video to answer the question and give some thoughts in terms of where things are going um, in this realm of chat GPT and just general technology. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ben Rogajan, AKA the Seattle Data Guy. Prior to consulting, I worked at Facebook as a data engineer, um, as well as several startups. So I've been doing this nearly a decade and I love sharing my experiences with you guys as well as just thoughts. So let's dive into my thoughts in terms of is data engineering a safe career choice? So before we start digging into answering this question, I think what's important to understand is how much data engineering has changed in the last decade. You see, when I started in the data world, um, I was still working on things on prem, but Hadoop was definitely kind of picking up and maybe at its peak at this point um, in terms of, in theory, being this end all be all that, you know, will solve all of our data problems because it can actually process a lot of data in theory, considerably cheaper than the current solutions that we were using. Um, also at the time, Redshift had uh, come out. So I think it's important to have that in there as well as like one of the first cloud data warehouses. So both of these solutions together, you know, people were like, this is, this is it. This is what we're going to all be doing. So in that world, data engineers and data scientists spent a lot of their time writing MapReduce jobs. They used tools like Pig and Flume and a couple other uh, wild named tools just to try to manage all of this. And it was very chaotic. And it was kind of that whole like, hey, if you ask people, you know, back in the day, what would they want in the future? You know, in terms of all the newer horses, they wouldn't have thought of cars. They would have just been like, well, faster horses. And that's kind of most of the tooling that was built initially. A lot of it was just built to make MapReduce easier or some of those basic things, but it really didn't solve the problem. Then someone was smart and was like, hey, maybe we put an abstraction layer on top of this. Um, so we had Hive and Presto and honestly even Snowflake, although it's not on top of, you know, an HDFS kind of layer, it still allows you to have like MPP um, or massively parallel processing managed with you not having to actually manage it right? Like a lot of what's done, a lot of this like breaking up of work and then kind of bringing it back together, um, which is somewhat similar to what's happening. There's a difference between MapReduce and MVP, but the point is that a lot of that got abstracted away. So now you're no longer having to do it. You still have a job though, right? In fact, data engineering continued to explode despite us simplifying some of the work that we had to do. And then an another common kind of thing that data engineers would do is build their own orchestration tools. I mean, I've been at multiple companies and everyone's built their own version of Airflow a thousand times over. I worked at a company that we built our own version. So these exist. But in 2015, Airflow came out and suddenly, you know, orchestration was taken care of. And now we've got like four other options, including Mage, which I'll link below because we're really trying to make it, you know, the most popular uh, data orchestration tool out there on the market. And there's other components that were slowly kind of chipping away at the typical work data engineers were doing. So generally, each of these components do tend to make our work easier, but oddly, we still have more work and more of us. I think someone put this really uh, well recently where they referenced the fact that, you know, Python to a degree is kind of this easier tool to use, right? Like it lowered the barrier of entry in terms of people who can program because you're no longer having to deal with like learning how to do pointers or learning different data structures and algorithms. A lot of that's just done for you in Python, right? Like a lot of the heavy lifting is taken care of. So more people can now program and now we need more people that can program because more things are possible. And I think the same thing is going to happen here with like tools like ChatGPT that will help improve our ability to code faster. If you missed the video of me kind of uh, poking around ChatGPT, you can see it here. But the point is it really was helpful while I was programming, but it still didn't do everything. And it still could only really build based off of the information it had pulled from the internet. And so it kept running into these issues like, oh, well, that library is no longer used or just other little things here and there. So there still needs to be someone on the other end that's kind of giving it the context and making sure you're, that context is provided in a way that makes sense. Now, I'm not saying that this means that everyone's going to need to become prompt engineers or whatever that is um, in the future. Maybe that's kind of part of it is we just have to learn how to actually use it. But I kind of feel like that's going to hopefully become even simpler as we improve different uh, GPT models and other LLMs where you don't have to be so specific or have to kind of tailor um, your prompt in such a specific way, but instead it can be a very kind of broad application of who can actually work with this solution. But we'll, we'll see there. 
The point is the tools tend to change, but there are certain components of the skill set that rarely go away. You know, how to put these systems together effectively, how to debug, how to fix all these problems tends to still require some level of human intervention to make sure that this all goes smoothly. Besides that, there are other um, layers that are coming in. Besides that, there are kind of other things I'd almost be slightly more concerned about, um, like the fact that in theory, there's a lot of zero EL um, that's going to probably be coming. You know, we have Snowflake that's likely going to just allow you to pull data from different data sources like Salesforce, like ServiceNow, without maybe even having any form of pipeline. So now all that you need to stick on top of that is some level of SQL and business logic. And not to mention that AWS is doing the same thing with Redshift and a lot of your standard databases like Postgres. So a lot of these things will just be brought to your data warehouse. And that will honestly, in my opinion, be great. Um, instead of having to fiddle around with, you know, is this a CSV that we're kind of pulling data from or pipe delimited or all, you know, an API that we're parsing XML or JSON, the data will just exist as a table. And that makes so much more sense than having to, you know, fiddle around with this little bits of code that doesn't add a lot of value. So yes, our role is just going to be continued to be pushed to the extremes. On one side, we'll be forced to work with the analysts more um, and try to provide more value um, just directly to the business. And on the other side, we'll be, they'll still be coding, but it'll be the harder problems that maybe, you know, GPT or some of these other one-off solutions can't solve out of the box. There have always been these canned solutions, canned reporting, forever and they've rarely fully solved the solution they can do a lot and a lot of them i think are going in the right direction where you know maybe yeah in six seven years the way data engineers operate today will be drastically different they'll have a different title you know maybe you're not even doing the same work but by that time most of us who have been working for a long time will likely be managers trying to drive value or if we're ic's we're going to be learning these new tools because that's part of working in technology is we must be learning new tools every year. It's kind of the painful reality. Yes, there's some base tools and base skills we can use, but all those other little skills, we just have to continually keep picking up. And sometimes those tools just last for a year or two, and then we're on back to the basics, like with Hadoop, where maybe some people spent a ton of time learning how to write MapReduce jobs or operate, you know, and manage uh, the servers and the nodes, but now, what are they doing? They're writing SQL or they're writing Airflow jobs or a lot of these similar things. And it's completely ignoring the fact that some companies haven't even migrated off of some of these previous solutions. So people need help just migrating or managing some of these prior solutions. So there's plenty, I mean, plenty of work to go around in the data world. We're just further gathering more data um, so that we can process it uh, via GPT. So the people that can actually help manage that whole, all that chaos and all of the stuff just flying in will only likely become more valuable as things get more complex. So I wouldn't worry too much. I focus more on making sure your core skills are solid and make sure you occasionally pick up a new skill here or there so you are constantly ready for whatever change occurs. Yes, the technology world changes. That's just the reality. Um, but I wouldn't stress too much about it. Your role will not be the same role that you're you know, starting today um, in a few years. I actually recall having a professor tell us he'd never give us advice in terms of what programming language we should learn because by the time we learned that programming language and we were out of school it'd likely be obsolete and to a degree he was probably right or at the very least not fully right you know there's still plenty of java work out there in c plus plus and c sharp and just about everything else um, under the sun so i wouldn't worry too much about you know, are you picking the right tool or the right coding language? Make sure you have solid basics and you have a few good examples from your prior jobs in terms of how you actually contributed to the business, not just, you know, how'd you solve some coding problem and you'll likely always be employable. With that, guys, I want to say thanks so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks and goodbye.